I think um, I always like to start the interviews by telling people how we met, but this time I want you to tell them how we met. So okay, <laughs> um, so actually we um, we met at church, which was um, kind of fun. Um, I recently, well, earlier this year, began going to a new church plant and really just loved being there. Um, and this beautiful woman came up to me one day and was like, I hear that you travel. And I said, yes. And she said, so do I. So let's get together and talk about that. Yeah. And so we had a coffee that was supposed to be for, I don't know, a 30 minute 30 coffee. Minutes. And we were there for at least two hours. Um, and then we've just kind of done things here and there and um, talked about all sorts of things from travel to global leadership to, um, Essential oils, yeah, and how and neuroscience and neuroscience and, <laughs> and um, we found out we're kind of geeky in yeah. the same sort of ways. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of the same things, um, kind of as interest, and so that's how we met. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. And um, it's always cool. This is what I love about my job is that I get to meet so many people, and not only women, but men also who are really passionate about what they do and wanting to share that passion and what they've learned with with other people. So I really appreciate you taking the time out of your, your busy schedule because you're going to school full time and going for your, is it your My master's? master's yeah. yeah. And so she's taking time out of that while she's in the middle of writing a paper and coming here and spending time with us to talk about essential oils and the positive effects that they can potentially have on our whole well-being. And yes. one of the topics that we're really passionate about at Womanars is the mind-body-spirit connection. So I'm really excited for you to kind of just give us, uh, give us an idea how you transitioned into working with essential oils. Okay, yeah, um, so I wanna start, can I start with my disclaimers? Absolutely. Because those are always important. Um, so I'll give you the disclaimer that the information shared here today is for educational purposes only. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. Products, techniques mentioned here are for educational purposes. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What I am saying is that I am not an expert, but I have done copious amounts of research. I have spent time with a lot of experts, um, and I have been studying essential oils and kind of their effects on whole body wellness for about the past five years, which is a long time to begin yeah. to do that. Um, I am not a doctor. I always tell people to consult with their doctors before they were to do anything like go off their medication or replace their medication with an oil, which should only be done under doctor's care. So that is not, um, not my shtick at all. Um, and then I also, my second disclaimer is that everything we're gonna talk about today is through Young Living Essential Oils. Um, there's a reason that I have chosen Young Living Essential Oils and that is because um, I find that the work that they do to ensure that from the time a, a seed is put in the ground until the plant has been distilled and put into a bottle um, is, is overlooked and pure and they own their own farms and so I've chosen them. There's a lot of other spaces um, but those are who I'm, that is who I'm talking about today. So. Those are, that is important. So um, basically you were asking how I got into essential oils as a whole, um, especially because my background is in uh, global leadership development. So obviously <laughs> essential oils. Um, most people, when most people think about essential oils, um, their first thought is lavender eucalyptus because they think of being in the spa or getting a massage or, you know, aromatherapy of some sort, which is great, and that's a great way to think about it. But for me, um, about four and a half years ago, I was about to, I was working uh, between 60 and 70 hours a week, working on um, the same masters that I'm working on now. And it's been a long, slow journey. And um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of in the midst of a lot of, a lot of, a lot of a lot, right? A lot of grief, a lot of stress. And a friend of mine, um, had been using essential oils and I was already kind of on the path to alternative thought processes when it came to how to treat my body as a whole. And so I just asked her if she had anything for focus. And she said, yeah, I've got some stuff that will help support your mental acuity. And I was like, what is that? Because I am in need of it, right? And um, so 
um, I met with her and she gave me three bottles. Um, she gave me a bottle of peppermint, a bottle of lavender, and a bottle of lemon to take on a trip. I was about to jump on a plane and go to Tanzania. And I fell in love with those particular oils and what they did for me while I was there. Um, if nothing else, I like the smell of them. And um, I didn't know anything about them at the time. And I just asked her how I need to know more. And so um, I, uh, kind of got into Young Living as, as a general rule. And then over the past four and a half years, I've just educated myself, not just in, oh, this smells nice, because I'll be honest, not all essential oils smell nice. Yeah. Um, but just kind of got into um, how they benefit and support the body as a whole. And they did for you. They did for me. Yeah. They did for me. Um, very much mind, body, spirit. You know, a lot of times um, in this part of the world which we call the west right we call it conventional medicine versus maybe eastern or alternative like those are the terms that are thrown around when it comes to essential oils um, or just alternative medication as a whole but we often treat the body mind and spirit as three separate entities right um, if you have something going on with your heart you go to a cardiologist rather than finding out if maybe it's stress that's causing that, right? And so if it's stress that's causing it, well, what, where is that underlying stress? Well, is it something that's going on in the mind or in the spirit? Is there something spiritually going on? And here in the West, we often treat the symptom and put a Band-Aid over things versus really getting to the root of a problem. So for me, um, what essential oils did was they opened up the possibility of being able to work um, and not just treat a symptom, um, but to work to just support my body as a whole so that not only was I working through things, but while I was working through things, I was also supporting the systems that were actually working right. already. Right. So. Yeah. And you know, I think, and the reason that I really wanted to talk about this is because there's, there's beginning to be a big transition, right? From with people transitioning into a more holistic approach to medicine, yes. you know, or to going to a holistic doctor or somebody that's not going to prescribe another pill right. for them. So, and I really think it's important for us to educate ourselves. Like I didn't know that much about essential oils and, uh, until I met um, Amanda here. And after reading about them, I was like, wow, this is really, this has been, they've been around for so long, mm -hmm. you know, and in Europe, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but in Europe, doctors actually prescribe essential oils to their patients as part of their um, medicinal right. therapy. Right. So along with whatever other prescriptions they might, may, might give them, but I mean, it's actually very common yes. in Europe, in and around Europe, and I'm sure throughout the East as well. Yeah. But um, and there are talk doctors, about that a little bit. Sure, so, and there are, um, there are doctors and hospitals here in the United States that are catching on to that. You know, um, it just kind of in my work in the global world, right, mm -hmm. I will always, I will often see things come East to West. Yeah. Um, and so we are now beginning to see, um, medical facilities do a, and, and um, university medical schools doing a lot of research around things like frankincense and the effects that that can have on the body as a whole, body and mind, right? A lot of times researchers are not out there looking to do the spiritual parts of things, right? But what you and I know is that it does work at that level as well. Um, but but they really are working on things like supporting mental acuity and supporting um, supporting immune systems with essential oils. Hospitals, some hospitals are beginning to diffuse them um, and finding out that there are places and spaces that they'd kind of put off to the side as kind of poo poo, if you will, right, right. before. And now they're finding that um, they're putting science to what was already scientific years and years ago yeah. so yeah and I think part part of that is that neuroscience right yes. and the the psychology of how smells or scents actually affect us mm -hmm. or how they have a positive or even a negative effect sometimes I think because they yes. might stir up some old um, emotions you know or maybe some past traumas that might come back I know for me and I thought about this after that class that we took mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I, and it wasn't necessarily an essential oil by any means, but because I had been molested, one of the things that I could never stand that would bring back, trigger back memories was the smell of beer on someone's mm. breath. And it didn't matter who it was. It's like if I smell beer on somebody's breath, it triggered, it triggered that anxiety, mm -hmm. right? So um, take, we, we took a class together um, on Saturday. And so when she was talking about how, you know, what happens in your brain and how it takes you back mm -hmm. to experiencing those same feelings that you had during that time. I mean, here I was a grown adult and right. just the, the smell of beer on somebody's breath would like totally give me anxiety. You know, I had to walk out of the room right. because it was just overwhelming for me. So, talk. Can you can you tell people what kind of happens? And I know we're not doctors, sure. here, but kind of what happens to trigger that? Yeah. So, um, fragrance is the substance of memories. One, my brother is an incredible writer, and one time he wrote a um, he wrote this gorgeous little essay. Um, I think for a class or a competition or something, he wrote an essay on the smell of charcoal. Mm -hmm. And if you think about what charcoal often um, evokes, right? So here in the United States, charcoal evokes summertime and steaks on the grill or hot dogs at on July 4th or you know something yeah. fantastic like that. For um, my brother and I, the smell of charcoal often evokes, I grew up in Eastern Africa. So charcoal will evoke um, the, the thought of eating at our, you know, eating in the village mm -hmm. because we would eat op over an open fire or they would be cooking over, um, you know, like a homemade, a homemade grill. And um, so just it immediately triggers, it immediately makes your mouth water, it makes you anxious or something like that. And so that's something, so the scientific side of that, um, and I have a couple of notes because I always want to make sure I'm getting the, the things right, right? But is, um, it's the amygdala. So it's the part of the brain that senses your emotions, your, um, your memories, right? And in order to access and then release, if we need healing from it, emotional trauma, we, gotta, we have to access that. And the only way to access that is through the limbic system, which is through fragrance. So a lot of times people don't realize that, you know, some of the trauma that they've gone through, you know, they can go to a counselor all day long. And I encourage that. I highly encourage people to get help where they need to get it. But there are things that can be done day in and day out um, to really help, to help heal them, if you will, from, right. from some of that. Smell is one of the only um, of our five senses that's directly linked to the frontal lobe of to the frontal lobe of the brain, right? It houses our emotions, has a direct effect, like I said, on our limbic system. So when you breathe in peppermint, mm -hmm. um, peppermint is known to help kind of support energy. It's really great um, at three o'clock in the afternoon when you really, really need a cup of coffee mm -hmm. to just like breathe in. Peppermint can often just wake up the brain and you, you, you can watch it. Like if you watch it on a scanner, you can watch all the whole brain kind of wake up. And it's the same thing for emotional trauma and there are specific oils that go with emotions mm -hmm. very very specifically to be able to go in and begin to change at a cellular level that the memories and I think that was the most fascinating part of the, that class is how an emotion or even like when as a child mm -hmm. you know if you're brought up in a very fearful environment how the cells in your body and in your brain actually activate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it literally activates cells that generate on, on the fear, mm -hmm. based on fear. So going back in there and what essential oils um, can possibly do is retrain those cells mm -hmm. and regenerate them so that, you know, the, when you say thoughts become things, you know, it's very true and that's what you're doing. So a lot of times we have those childhood traumas or right. the things that people have said to us that are still in our bodies, Right. you know, and we don't even know it. Well, and sometimes it triggers in, in ways that we don't even understand. So um, I have a friend that comes from a yelling household mm -hmm. and um, 
so she grew up in a yelling household and it was just kind of like the norm right and not like not like an italian or a beautiful jewish household where everybody's just real loud right or an indian household i grew up with a lot of indians and we're just real real loud um but she grew up in a household where yelling was the norm right if you got angry you yelled so she grew up and she got into her first really serious relationship and um every time that he would yell she would cower now yelling in her household was not associated with beating it wasn't associated with anything physical but for her the yelling was enough mm. right and it took years for her to a realize that that was even a stressor right. but it also to realize that it didn't have to be a norm you didn't have to yell in a relationship you could sit and calmly talk things out and um, she has recently been kind of using some um, some oils specifically for emotions, specifically around anger and forgiveness, just to kind of help deplete her own body. Because for her, a short, you know, she has a long, a, a long fuse. But once once it's fused, then it's you know it's done, and the right. yelling begins. And she didn't know how to even. She had to retrain those parts of her brain waves that A, yelling wasn't something that was scary, right? right? And B, yelling wasn't something that had to be done, mm -hmm. right? She could, she could react differently to it. And that was a, it was a powerful thing for her to kind of break through at that time. Well, and you know, you mentioned earlier about some of the um, oils not having that peppermint or eucalyptus smell, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, I have to tell my story because I, I think it's pretty funny. I but. love the story. <laughs> so, it's so true. It because, happens every time. Because I, I, um, when I met Amanda, I had told her some of the things that I was, I was struggling with, and so <laughs> lo and behold, she asked me whether or not I had actually prayed about it and asked God to help me. And so I was like, well, you know, I have not. <laughs> and you know, but that was really telling for me because I know that God's going to answer my prayer. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest obstacles in my life, I had not gone to him in prayer. Right. And we have I, not because, because, we because yeah, and, and I, I honestly think I was afraid. Subconsciously, mm -hmm. I was afraid of the answer. And so when I went to, to God in prayer and he gave me the answer, you know, I was really taken aback by what it was. And um, so I, I contacted Amanda and you had left the book. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had left the book for me, and so I started reading about uh, about what I was struggling with, and I thought, oh my gosh. So I told uh, Amanda, I said, I need Leadum oil. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she was like, okay, well, okay, we'll get we'll just we'll need some Leadum oil. Lead oil. Get that so, ordered right away. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I got it, I was just like, I opened it up and I smelled it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I texted her and I was like, I'm going to smell like 409. I'm like, what is this stuff? Now, meanwhile, so we'll, and there's this, just, just a rabbit trail a little bit. I had ordered a bottle for myself to use for something completely different than Tilda was using it for, which is what I love about oils is that one oil doesn't have, unlike like something that's over the counter where you use this one thing for this one symptom, Essential oils can be used for a host of things, like lavender can be used for, there's like a thousand different uses for lavender, yeah. right? So I had ordered Lidum for a different thing, and on the same day that she thinks it smells like 409, I love the smell. I, I have opened the bottle and I'm just like breathing it in and I'm like putting it on and she's like it smells like floral wine. I know and she's like it smells like grapes. I'm like really <laughs> like this I'm gonna be walking around like a 409 bottle you know but here's the thing and this was a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. maybe that I started yeah. using it and so now the smell has totally changed and is actually um, relaxing. You know, it's it, a grounding effect. yeah, I mean, it's really changed um, the way that I perceive the smell now. So I don't know what's happening, but yeah, maybe you so can tell us what, what's happening. What I always like to tell everyone, you know, a lot of times people, when they know that I use essential oils, they'll say to me, hey, what essential oil could I use for fill in the blank of a symptom, right? Um, and what I tell them is, I don't know which obviously they're like, but you're the expert. <laughs> Why don't you know? But the thing is, is that every body has a different body. Every body reacts differently 
to essential oils as a general rule. Um, and so what I might use perhaps to um, help, you know, alleviate some just annoying things in the air may not be the exact same thing that you use for that, right? Because our bodies have different chemistries and, and how I use it may be different than how you use it. Um, so I always tell people when I sit down with them to work through whole wellness is a, what is, what's going on with you, right? That you're wanting to kind of use essential oils to address, but B, where does, what's triggering that, right? right? Because there's, a, there's going to be an answer to that, that perhaps you didn't know before, or perhaps there's a different oil that's going to go with that. So, um, in your case, what I always tell people is that, um, essential oils, the smell of essential oils will have two different effects on us if we need them, right? All oils are kind of, I mean, all oils smell, um, but when you're smelling them, you're like, oh, this kind of smells whatever. And you're just kind of passive about it. It's, it's a, it's fine. It smells okay. I don't really like it. One of the two is just not a, it's not a, um, what like extreme, right? So, um, and other, uh, other types is, um, you will pick up a bottle of oil. I'm gonna actually use my Valor. That's right here. Cause this is, this happened to me. The first time I ever smelled Valor, I literally picked it up and I smelled it. And I'm gonna tell you, you heard what I was doing when I first started using oils, right? So when I first started using oils, 60 to 70 hours a week, um, going through a lot of grief and a little amount of time, very, very, very extreme things going on. I wanted to dive into this little bottle and this is a five milliliter bottle and I am not that little. I wanted to dive in, swim around. My mouth started watering. I had emotional, like a, an emotional reaction to it right away. At the same time, I got a bottle of joy. Joy, which is incredible for all sorts of things, especially just kind of in the support of your emotions, right? And I mean, it's called joy for a reason, <laughs> right? There's, there's a reason that you wanna use want that, that, right? Exactly, <laughs> I didn't. When I smelled joy, it literally made me like viscerally nauseous. Wow. Because you weren't that, experiencing there were, it. I had yeah. no joy in yeah. my life at that moment. And my body was rejecting the fact that it even wanted to be joyful, right? So I, um, in that case, my bo in both cases, my body needed, was asking for both of those oils, yeah. but I was asking for them in different ways. So I always tell people if, a bo if it really smells bad, put it as far away from you as possible. Put it on the bottom of your feet, put socks on, yeah. it'll metabolize fast enough, it's not gonna smell, but now I wear joy as a perfume, <laughs> right? I wear joy as a perfume, I diffuse it, I love the smell of it, yeah. right? Um, the other thing that's interesting about if you're using an oil blend is, uh, for instance, purification. Purification has lemongrass, citronella, and rosemary, and something else in it, but you'll pick it up and be like, oh, this smells, this lemongrass smells so good. Yeah. And I won't smell the lemongrass at all. I'll smell the rosemary. Yeah. Because my body is responding to whatever the rosemary is going to do to help support my system. And your body is responding to what the lemongrass is going mm -hmm. to do. So it's a very interesting yeah. how it works. Again, that's kind of the scientific things that you can go and research and I can but help you, know you out what? with that, that later. That goes back to really how uniquely and wonderful, wonderfully we are made, right? Yes. And how Absolutely. our past experiences create our own perception and reality. Mm -hmm. Because you and I could be next door neighbors and right. grow up in the same neighborhood and have two totally different experiences, you know, to where if we go back into the neighborhood, I'm going, I might experience anxiety and you're euphoric. Right. You know, so, I mean, I it think happens the same in the same household. Smell. Yeah. It happens in the same household, you know, yeah. smells that I absolutely love. My brother, it triggers things in him that he just doesn't appreciate yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Right. And, um, so, it, but we're both working, you know, it's, it's, again, it comes back to really being self-aware. What is it? You really have to dig deep sometimes. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you can't because it is repressed. And so the oil helps release. Well, I can, I can tell you, you when, right? in using the, the Lidam oil that I have been using, I've noticed my dreams are really vivid. 
Mm. And sometimes I even feel anxiety mm -hmm. when I put it on before I go to bed and I put it on first thing in the morning. But like the past couple of nights, I've been getting a little bit of anxiety after mm -hmm. I put it on. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm coming to my breakthrough right. <laughs> and I'm going to push through, right. you know, because I'm praying and I'm asking God to help me. Um, you know, work through this, and but I feel that resistance. Yes, you know, because uh, your body doesn't want to experience pain, right? And yeah. emotional, you know, physical pain, emotional pain, it's all pain, and your body doesn't want to experience that. And so, and the beautiful thing is, is that you are willing to do the breakthrough. And for some people, including myself, sometimes you get to a space where maybe you don't want to experience that breakthrough. You do but you get to that pain point. You're yeah. like, this hurts too bad. Um, and the beautiful thing is, is that there are oils that can come alongside you yeah. and help kind of push that through, mm -hmm. you know, with some help. So. so where can people go? Cause we're almost out of time here, sure. but where can people go um, to kind of, what would help them decipher? Cause since we are uniquely made and everybody needs something different, yeah. you know, how, what's the best way to determine what's best for them? Sure. So, um, there are, well, first of all, you can always, you can always ask me. Um, that's part of what I do, right? Is I work, um, you can, Facebook is the easiest way to reach me right now. My website is there, but it is under, um, it is under construction right this second. Um, but you can go to facebook.com forward slash joy in valor, joy in valor the letter in and um and the, you know you can reach out and i'm more than happy i walk people through their wellness journeys all the time it's what i it's part of my passion in life um but if they're looking for other spaces to do that um ylsearch.com is a great place to do that um oil-testimonials.com is a great place to kind of go and just yeah. see where other other people's stories right yeah. and what might work for them um, and then there are a couple of other kind of books and resources and I've got some of those out on my website but also on my Facebook page that will be but what I encourage people to do is to sit down and talk with somebody who's already kind of like you know myself or you know if you have a friend that's already working in Young Living to kind of talk with them through some things first yeah. um, because you want to dive in with the right stuff right, right? Exactly. And there can be whole wellness in a bottle. It just you want to make sure that the right bottle is coming off the shelf. Awesome. So is yeah. there anything that you want to share that we didn't get to? I don't think so. I, th I don't think so. I love this part of the journey. <laughs> it, it Really, the emotions, uh, the mind-body-spirit connection um, with essential oils is really my passion. Yeah. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of different areas and niches that you can kind of walk into when it comes to whole wellness. But... Um, I think that, that when you address your body as a whole, mm -hmm. instead of addressing it as an individual mind, body, spirit, um, you will experience some freedom. So I apologize. I told you the other day, I apologize in advance for your future <laughs> for <my> freedom. freedom. <laughs> so, but thank you for letting me share today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And thank you everybody for joining us here on Tuesdays with Tildy. And um, if you like what you're seeing, please share it. Don't keep us a secret. And also follow us on our YouTube channel at Womanars, Twitter, and of course here on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday.